Hey guys and welcome back. So today we're actually going to be doing an unboxing video. I've recently ordered um, a load of new pigments and some replacement pigments from Cornelison's so I thought that I would do an unboxing of those and we can have a little, little, little look at them. And this is just going to give you an idea of what's going to be coming up um, for Patreons and in the future for some handmade paints. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and open these up. Next up, let's have a look at what's in the box. Too much. Very well packaged. Oh, I think the invoice is on the top. I'll just grab that out. I'm going to use a tick list to make sure everything's so. It was a pretty big order, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> it came to over £200, so it's, pretty, it's a pretty big order. So, oh, lots of packing peanuts. I think everything's wrapped by the looks of it. Uh, okay, then let's get all this out. This is all wrapped. Yeah, it looks like it's all wrapped like this. Because some of it's probably in plastic jars, some of it's probably in glass jars. So. Yeah, I'm going to take all this out, I think, and then we're going to have a little closer look at them. Okay, so I've taken everything out of the box and I've loosened the tape on all the packaging. As you can see, it's um, really well packaged with cardboard and they've put, obviously, some paper tape on there as well, so it's a bit more environmentally friendly. It's a shame I don't think the packing chips are quite as environmentally friendly, but nevertheless, let's get into it and have a little look. So this is the first roll and there's two pigments in this one. So the first one is a Vermilion Imitation. I don't know if that's going to focus. Let's have a look. There we go. So that's, this is a Vermilion Imitation, so it's a Vermilion Hue. Um, I thought I'd get this. It wasn't too expensive, so I thought I'd get it and try it out. I thought it'd be interesting. And then the next one we've got is Blue Verditor. So I have previously had this one as a um, sample size, and I offered it as a dot card to some Patreons. So Patreon's got to try this one, so I thought I'd order more because it was really well loved. So I thought I would order some more and try and make this um, in a larger batch so we could put some on sale. Right, let me just mark that off on my list so we know that it's arrived. <laughs> I've got to this because it's quite a long list and if I don't mark them all off, I've got to chase it up because <laughs> it means it's missing. Um, what is the other one? Verta Blue. Is that on the back? It's not on the list, that's weird. I mean, definitely ordered it. Chameleon, Cinnabon, oh there it is. Where is it? <laughs> so that's that one. The next one is another really big, chunky, hefty tube. So let's take this one. Oh, well, there's quite a lot of pigments in here, so... First one we're going to show, have a look at is a reorder. So this is manganese violet. It's 50 grams. This is a colour that I've not made in a while. Last time I made it, I made it way too much, and a lot of it started to go funny in the jar, so... I've ordered some more. And that's a nice colour as well. It's a nice violet colour. Next, we've got a weird one. This is oriental blue. Um, it's actually supposed to be a phthalo blue, I think, but they've got a couple of blues like this. They're kind of labelled, They are the pigment is PB15. It's a phthalo blue, but they've kind of labelled it different names. So I'm curious and wonder what the difference is between this one and maybe more of a traditional um, phthalo blue. And then we've got, what's this one? Mars Violet. So this is an earthy pigment. Um, I got this because I thought it was a... It was quite a cheap pigment and it was kind of an interesting pigment, so I thought I'd get this to give this one a go. Um, 
it's one of those pigments that not that people don't tend to normally first grab but it's um, it can be a really useful colour. And lastly in this roll we have a cobalt green light which is a really tiny amount. It looks like a small amount, this must be like a really heavy pigment because this is 50 grams here of the vermilion imitation and this is 50 grams here of the cobalt green light. So you can see some pigments are heavier than others so their mass is like their actual amount of pigment you get in terms of volume is really different. Yeah, that's cobalt green light. I thought it looked really interesting on the website. And I don't actually use any cobalt greens in my work. I think the only cobalt green I have might be PG50. I don't have any other cobalt greens in my collection. So even in commercial paint brands, I don't have it. So this is a new one to me. So let's just mark those off. So what did we have? Oriental blue. Um, cobalt green, wasn't it? Cobalt green light, Mars violet and manganese. Violet. So that's that one. Lots of packaging. <laughs> Next one is a really thin tube, so these are all going to be sample sizes. Um, Corn Edison's offer like a range of sizes, and one of the other things they do offer is um, it makes it affordable. If you want to just try out pigments, or you know you're, you're not doing this for business purposes, and you're after just trying out the pigment, you can get small sample sizes like this that come in 15 milliliter jars. They range from anywhere between 6 to 15 grams and they're usually pretty, um, they're good to try out colours and um, a little more affordable. Usually they're under £15 for a small jar, um, depending on the pigment you go for, because some of these pigments are quite expensive pigments. So the first one is Antwerp Blue, so I just got a small jar of this. And this is one of the other ones, this is the one that sort of goes with the Oriental Blue. It's labelled as PB29 but they call it something different, and then if you look at the colours between the oriental blue, this is a lot darker. So that's why I got it, because I was kind of curious. So this one, these small jars won't be made into paint for sale. These will be made into dot cards for my Patreons to then try some colours out. Um, I've done this, if there are any popular ones, I will bring them back and put, sell them as open stock in half pounds or four pounds. But there is another reason why some of these won't be making the list. Some pigments I've got here are extremely toxic and I wouldn't want to work with large quantities of them. In small quantities like this, it's fine. I can take um, the necessary precautions, but some of these pigments are very, very poisonous in small amounts. And this one, well, next one is one of them. And this is Genuine Vermilion. This one is really, really toxic. I don't really want to be working with a large quantity of this, so this one won't be made into paint for sale. It'll be made for Patreon, so at least we can try it and we can play with it and see what it's like. And I mean, if you compare that to the imitation, they're not too far off. I would say the imitation, looking at the pigment powder, is a little bit more red than the actual genuine version, but it'll be interesting to see what it's like. But yeah, even this one has a label on it. Toxic and may cause harm to humble children, so very toxic. Next one is a weird pigment I've never really heard of before or seen in really commercial brands or anywhere, um, and that's cadmium green. You know, cadmium red and cadmium yellow are really popular and heavily used um, in paint brands, and I've not really seen cadmium green before. So I thought I'd get a small jar of this to give it a try. And again, offer trial sizes to people. Again, this one is also marked as pretty dangerous. Yes, don't breathe, don't eat, don't eat, drink, don't smoke. You shouldn't do that with any pigment, but some pigments like this one and like the more toxic ones, you really shouldn't breathe in. I mean, there are some like, you know, ochres, except for example, if you breathe a little bit of them in or ingest a little bit of them, it's not good for you. I don't recommend it doing it actively or, you know, seeking out to do it. But if you get some of it in your system by accident, it's not really going to cause you too much harm. Whereas something like this, a small amount of this, even like a gram of this could cause some really bad side effects, so it's not worth risking it. The next colour is Madder Lake Genuine. I want to try a Madder Lake colour to see what it's like. Um, the only colour I've tried that's Genuine Rose Madder is from Windsor & Newton and it smells of roses. But when I tried it, people recommended in the video that it wasn't actually um, Genuine Rose Madder apparently. So I thought I'd get some. Now they do offer two different Rose Madder Lakes, Corn Edison's do. This one was higher rated by customers as being better, so 
I got this one. We'll just have to see what that turns out like. Next two. First one is Quinacridone Red. Um, I got this one because I was kind of curious what it was like. And I thought I would add another little red to try out. Um, and you see it's a nice really deep red. It's a warm deep red. So I like warm deep red, so I can't wait to try that one. And then the next one is another really toxic one. And this is Cinnabar. This one needs to be used, same with the Genuine Vermilion. It needs to be used in a really well ventilated room. All masks needs to be worn and everything is kept out of the way. Um, they are pretty similar. They're kind of, both pigments are kind of interchangeable a lot. A lot of people want to change them. Um, but yeah, both are really toxic. I would say that the Cinnabar is definitely a little bit more red. Um, there's only 10 grams of the Cinnabar, but only 20 and 25 for the Genuine Vermilion. So I would say the Cinnabar is a really heavy pigment because there's probably about a quarter of the pigment of the Cinnabar as well there is the vermilion, so it must be really heavy. So that's all my little jars, I think. Next on, I think this is a medium size roll. The next one's a bit chunkier. Oh, oh. so in here, I think these some, some of these are restocks. So the first one is sort of a restock. This is Lapis Lazuli Dark. It's a very expensive pigment. It's 58 gram, uh, pounds for this 50 gram container. Um, but this is a really nice colour. I did get a sample size of this one and tried it with my Patreons. I compared this to the Vermilion that you, not Vermilion, the Lapis Lazuli that I got from Crema because I had a small amount of that left. So I thought I would compare the two and they were both quite different. This one's quite smooth and quite strong tinting where the other one was a bit weaker tinting but had a heavy granulation to it. So I thought I'd get this. Seeing as I can't really order from Crema so much anymore because of the import taxes and etc. That's kind of why I want to stick more to using um, Cornelius and pigments. The next one is a restock. This one is um, Cobalt Turquoise. I really love this colour. It's amazing colour. It's a bright electric blue and it always sounds really well so my customers must love it as well. <laughs> I love this one. Next one is Cadmium Yellow Lemon. This is a kind of a restock. Um, when I first started to making paints, I ordered a bag of this. And yeah, it was called Lemonade, what I labelled it as. And I've not made it for a couple of years now, so, because I ran out of pigments, so it'd be nice to bring this colour back. The next one is Translucent Orange Oxide. Um, I got this because it's a, you can't really see it, it's an interesting earth colour. It's supposed to be really heavily granulating. This is one of the things I don't like about Cornell Ellison's. They will send things in paper bags that are really, really messy. The way I tend to store it tends to be I tend to cut the top off and try and empty the pigment into a jar and then get rid of the bag or if I have to keep the bag, I wrap the bag in lots of cling film so that it's not going to leak and lose pigment everywhere. But I really don't like these bags. They're awful. I know they're more economically friendly, but I don't think they're very safe and I think they can lead to pigment getting everywhere, which is really unhealthy. So last roll, and this is a really chunky roll. Um, so there are big pots in these ones, and there's quite a lot of big pots. I've not been marking off my on my sheet. Let's mark some of these up. <laughs> so Vermilion Shame, we get this one, Cinnabar, Madden Lake, Lemon, Quinn Red, Antwerp Blue, um, Cadmium Green. And then, I think that's it. Um, I think there's some missing. I feel like there might be some missing. Because I've got more than 40. Oh, there's cobalt turquoise, I did that one. One, two. Oh. oh no, I think we've got them all. I just need to take some off. So let's start. So the first colour is titanium white. Um, I actually got this colour because it's really good to you for mixing with other colours. I've got some really good ideas that I can use with this for some convenience colours and a couple bits like that. I don't think I will make this as a single pigment on its own because I just don't think it would sell. Nobody really uses white pigment in um, general watercolour painting. This is going to be used for pretty much convenience mixes and effect paint. So be interesting what I can do with this. 
The next one is Ultramarine Violet. Um, I love a good Ultramarine Violet and I, this one looks like a really nice one. So I thought I'd get this one. And then next two are kind of new pigments to me. The first one is Terra Verde. Um, Terra Verde is a really, really interesting pigment. There's lots of variations of Terra Verde. Um, I've already made several of them from Russian Green to Bavarian Green to the Goan Green. They can really vary quite a lot. And then they're also really good for from handmade paint makers because we can adjust the paint recipe to include more humectant. So they're a bit easier to rewet than commercial brands. So you can get more of a colour payoff from handmade paint makers. So yeah, I love Green Earths and I will always buy Green Earths because they're inexpensive and they always have really good results. And finally, the last colour is Viridian Green Genuine. This again is another really toxic colour, but I've never made Viridian Green before. And I don't think I actually have a Viridian Green in my collection from commercial brands either. So this is, again is a completely new colour to my collection. Anywhere, um, in anywhere in my collection I don't have this pigment. So it'll be interesting to see what this is like. The modern version of this, the synthetic version, is Phthalo Green. Viridian Green is a bit weaker than Phthalo Green and it does granulate apparently. So it'd be interesting to see what that's like. But yeah, these are all the pigments. It's quite a lot of pigments, I'm aware of it, but I do this as part of a job. Um, as a business, so it's justifiable. I wouldn't be buying this much pigment if I was just doing this as a hobby. I would probably just stick to the smaller jars because nobody is ever going to use this much pigment um, in their lifetime of Iridium Green. <laughs> this will literally make probably about 20 to 30 half pounds of paint, which is quite a lot. Um, even if it's a car I loved a lot, I don't think I'd ever use that much. <laughs> but yeah. I thought it would be interesting to show you guys so you can have a look at how my pigment comes and how it goes from this to paint. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed having that little look. Um, let me know what you think down in the comment section below. What colour do you think is your favourite and you'd be most interested to try? But yeah, thanks for watching guys. I will catch you in the next video. Bye everybody.